Now, we'll be taking our message from Luke chapter 11. And verse 1. And it came to pass as he was praying in a certain place. When he sees, one of the disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray as John also taught his what? Disciples. We serve a God that answers prayers. In Psalm 65 verse 2, it says, Oh, that heareth prayer, unto thee shall all flesh come. God answers prayers. So when your prayers are not answered, you should ask yourself, what went wrong? It says, Oh, that answers, what? Prayer. So if your prayer is not answered, then you should ask what? Yourself, what went wrong? In Luke eleven thirteen, Jesus speaking, many said, "Man, if you if you been evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children. How much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask Him?" He said, "That's not you ask." He said, "We not we told anything good from them that walk uprightly, and they that seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing." Psalm thirty four verse ten. The young lions may lack and suffer hunger. But they that seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. There's nothing good you ever lack after today. <laughs> but there's a right and proper way to pray. In James chapter 4 and verse 3, it says, Ye ask and receive not, because ye ask and miss, that ye may consume it upon your lost. You are asking and you're not receiving because you are asking in the wrong way. Hear this and hear me well. Many don't learn how to pray. They think learning how to pray is a waste of time. They just engage in praying and keep bombarding heaven with prayer and fasting with an end. They just say, well, I have to pray. You know, we are bombarding heaven. I hear people say so. Don't know how you bombard God's gate. You can't bombard this gate, amen? You can't bombard God's gate, amen? Praise the Lord. But Jesus taught his disciples how to pray. In Luke chapter 11, if you read 1 to 4, he gave a formula of prayer. He said, and it came to pass as he was praying in a certain place, when he sees one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray as John also taught his disciples. And he said unto them, when he prayed, that means when you pray, say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done as in heaven, so in earth. Give us day by day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins, as we also forgive everyone that's indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Shout hallelujah. You don't learn to pray by praying. You learn to pray by learning it from God's word. I repeat, you don't learn to pray by praying. You learn to pray by learning it from God's word. There are vital keys that will enhance your effectiveness in prayer. And I'll be sharing them today. Engaging them will guarantee speedy answer. If you ignore these keys, your prayers will be empty, ineffective, and a waste of time. Many times people pray and they don't even wonder what are, what are they praying about and they cannot get any results. In fact, every religion prays, hope you know. Every religion prays, whether the answer comes or not, they are not bothered. But Christianity is not supposed to be so. We are supposed to pray to get answers. So I'll be sharing with you vital keys in securing answers to your prayers. Vital what? Keys in securing answers to your prayers. You know, if you carry the wrong key, no matter how sincere you are, you can't open the door. Even if you're sincere and then you carry the wrong key to a door, and you are crying. Will that open the door? 
No, you are sincere, yes. But that door will not be open. So when you use the wrong key in prayer, there will be no answer. Now be sharing with us a few of them. Number one, thanksgiving, worship, and praise. Thanksgiving, worship, and what? Praise. The first key. Jesus said, start by hallowing God's name. Because without thanksgiving, heaven is not permitted to open. It takes thanksgiving and praise to gain access to the throne of grace. In Psalm 100 verse 4, enter into his gate with thanksgiving and to his cause with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. No matter the challenges, no matter the problem before you, without thanksgiving, God is not going to hear you. Oh God, you know I have problems. God said, no. Enter into my gaze with what? Thanksgiving. In Philippians chapter 4 verse 6, it said, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. So without thanksgiving is a protest. God will not answer because you have fasted for 40 days. Please hear this. He will answer when you ask correctly. Fasting and prayer is to reinforce your strength for exploits. But it does not mean God will answer because you are fasting. If you pray wrongly. Are you getting what I'm saying? You build spiritual stamina with fasting, but that cannot move God to answer you when you pray wrongly. I pray somebody will have understanding. Now, Jesus concluded the prayer he taught the disciples by saying, Thine is thy kingdom, the power and the what? Glory. This means thanksgiving, worship, and praise. Therefore, begin your prayers with thanksgiving, worship, and praise, and end it with thanksgiving before God can take cognizance of what you are talking about. That's what God is saying. Any prayer you don't start with thanksgiving and end with thanksgiving, it's a nonsense prayer. When you want to pray, Father, I what? Thank you. And as you're ending, it's also so what? Thank you for answering my prayers. May the Lord give someone understanding. Amen. Shout a better amen. amen. Shout a loud amen. amen. So it's not, oh God, oh God, you know I'm in need of God. God said, you are protesting. Thank me first. Oh God, look at me, I'm suffering. God said, you are wasting your time. Come to me with what? Look at what I'm passing through. He said, thank me first. Otherwise, you can shout from now to tomorrow. I will not answer. God, don't you not have a need? He said, me too, I had a need. <laughs> Jesus said, and the tomb of Lazarus was what? He said, God, can't you hear me? He said, thank you. To open the gates of heaven. May somebody get understanding. Number two. You must pray to the Father and also pray in the name of Jesus. You must pray to the what? Father and also pray in the name of what? Jesus. In John chapter 16 and verse 23 and 24, and in that day, you shall ask me nothing. Very well I say unto you, whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, he will give with you. So my prayer will be to who? The Father. To who? The Father. He that told, have you asked nothing in my name? Ask. You shall receive that your joy may be what? Full. So if I want to pray, what do I ask? Father, in the name of who? Jesus. In John 14, 13 and 14. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will Anywhere you go, prayer is offered. Not in the name of Jesus. It's occultism. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Somebody pray, pray, pray. You won't hear Jesus. It's occultism. That you see miracle does not mean it's from God. You must ask the Father in the name of who? Jesus. Any prayer. 
It is pure narcotic practice. Because the scripture cannot be broken. If you ask the Father in my name, not in Emmanuel. Emmanuel is also God with us, but you can't use it for the name of Jesus. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You can't say, A, 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 B, B, be healed. No. Father, in the name of Jesus. So here. Number three. Pray from your heart. Pray from what? Your heart. Key number three. Prayer has to be from the heart before it can gain access to God. In Proverbs 16 verse 1, the preparations of the heart in man and the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. If I want my prayers to be answered, it has to come from where? My heart. Hannah went into the temple to pray. If you read 1 Samuel chapter 1, 13 to 20, I will read only 13. Now Hannah spake in her heart. In where? Today we have so much Pharisee prayers. People are shouting, yet they are not concentrating. Any prayer not emanating from the heart is a religious prayer. And now you know you are not praying from your heart. When you are praying, you are looking at your phone. Hello? Hello? Hold on. Are they praying? Hello? <laughs> when I'm through, I will call you. I, when I'm through, that prayer is not from your heart. How can you be from your heart? You know when you are. Do you know even in church, some people are praying, some people are not look, praying. They are looking at people. How did you see the person if you are praying? That means your heart is not involved in the prayers. Because if your heart is involved, you won't even know when somebody is around you. But when your heart is not involved, I've not seen where you're praying, you begin to think of how you say the soup, soup hi, this soup. This soup, eh? Today, I will eat you. You are praying, no? You are what? You say, ah, between a goosey or crow and a bono, which one will be better after fasting? You are praying. You are praying. You are calculating. See? My wife, she will not agree. She will be cooking a goosey. I don't know that I talk when I need to. You are praying. You are what? <laughs> that kind of prayer will not be... Yes, James 5, 16. I'll read the Amplified Classic. The B path. It said, The endless heartfelt continued prayer, heartfelt, of a righteous man make a tremendous power value which is dynamic in his work. Work. The heart fed prayers. If God finds nothing in your heart, nothing will be in your hand. The prayers to come from the inside, oh God of heaven, hear me now. It's not long drawn prayers, heart felt prayers. Many of us, as religious, we say, I pray for four hours. Believe you me, if I pray for hours, you see the result. I'm not kidding. If me pray for hours, you see it. Four hours prayer, you will see it. You will see the effect. Suppose you know who pray. The thing that the hours determines the result. Heart felt, not long drawn. No, we are bombarding for six hours. <laughs> we are not in the prayer competition. <laughs> we are not in the prayer competition. He said, the heart felt prayers of a righteous man. Heart. I don't mean you cannot pray for hours or don't misquote me, but if I pray like that, you will see the... I wonder how people pray after that, nothing to show. No, 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 then that is not prayer. Every prayer, pray. Also watch the results of the prayer. When you pray, look back. He said, watch and pray. This is a prayer and close. Watch. When you pray, pray. I also say, this prayer and pray, is it getting... If not getting, then go and readjust. In Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 10, it said, I, the Lord, search the heart and try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of what? His ways. Now, before you pray, it is important you prepare your heart. 
before you approach God in prayers. In Jeremiah 29, 11, 12, 13, it says, For I know the thoughts I think toward you, said the Lord. Thoughts of peace are not of evil. To give you and what? Expected end. He said, I have good plans for you. Then shall you call upon me and you shall go and pray unto me and I will hearken unto you when you pray. But how will I answer? Look at 13. And you shall what? Seek me and find me when you shall search for me with all your The entire being must be inside before God will answer. Your concentration will be there. In the name of Jesus, heal your people. Bless your people. I say, bless your people. Oh boy, off the TV. <laughs> Father, today, let this work. Check the pot. What that is, Bonnie? <laughs> hey, Gloria, this house girl, you will Check that pot. I've told you, turn down the gas. Father! <laughs> Junior, lock the door. <laughs> yeah, pray, you know. Yeah, what? Yeah, pray. Your heart is not in the prayer. That's not how to pray. It's a the heart felt prayer. <laughs> there has to be a young man who used to live with us. I will hear his voice from my room. So I call my wife one day and say, What is he praying? You will hear it to So, I said, This guy is not contested here. Jeremiah 30 21. The deep part. And I'll cause him to draw near and he shall approach unto me. For who is this that engage his heart to approach unto me, said the Lord. So when you want to pray, make sure your heart is what? Off. Remove all the thoughts in your heart. All those small, small things, remove them. Focus on the prayers. Oh God of heaven. If you're spending one hour, let it be one hour. If it's two hours, it'll be two hours. Know that you just... <sighs> oh, this guy never called me to now. <sighs> I, this telephone call self. I want phone ring. He said, they tell you, say, make you hold on. No, you had something. Hold on. <laughs> no, yes, I did pray. I know you had to be praying. How did you know that the phone is ringing? Are you are praying, no? Hold on now. I'm praying. When I feel pray, I'll call you. Father, in the name of Jesus, continue. God said, look at you. One of the things that distracts so much in prayers is telephone. When you want to pray, turn your phone like this. There are some calls you can't reject. Are you understand? So if you really want to pray, either you put on silent and turn it or you off it. The person will realize that that period there's something you're doing. What I do, I turn the phone. But there are calls you can't, you must be forced to answer. Maybe a senior man is calling you. Are you understand? You'll be forced to pick the call and say, sir. So the best thing is to turn the phone off because you're communicating with the senior of all seniors. Because phone can distract you. When you're through with prayers, you see the missed call, you now call the person. Say, sir, I was, I was doing so-so thing, so I have to talk to you now. The person too will understand because he's a child of God, no matter how anointed the person is. Praise the Lord. Number four. Are you getting blessed? Yes, Number one. Thanksgiving, worship and praise. Number two? Mm? Number two? Number three? And number four? Key number four. Pray according to God's will. Pray according to God's will. That is pray in agreement with the word of God. That's what I mean. Pray in agreement with the word of God. In 1 John 5, 14. I 
And this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. God's word is his will. That means you must have his word for what you are asking for. Otherwise, there will be no response from him. In Isaiah 43, verse 26, it said, Put me in remembrance. Let us plead together. Declare thou that thou mayest be what? Justified. It remind me of my word. Now, prayer is likened to a courtroom. In my life, I've only been to court premises only once. Not the, that's into a court hall. When I was in Lagos, a young man, a lawyer said he has case, and I followed him. When I followed him, the man was with the case. He couldn't even talk well. The man was just bombarding him. I said, why did you bring me to court here? <laughs> and after that time, we took the one that won him as our own lawyer. Because I liked the way the man spoke. I said, I like you, Pastor. You will carry me to court. Now, prayer is like that. Prayer is what? You must tell God why. You will cite sections upon sections according to lawyer. According to section this, this, this. So you say, according to Romans this, Genesis this, God, you have to do this. Going to pray without the word is speaking English. If you want God to answer, you tell him why. He said, produce your strong reasons. Tell me why I should do it. Is that clear? If we pray according to his word, Isaiah 41 verse 21, he said, produce your cause, said the Lord. Bring forth your strong word. Tell him, tell God, this, based on this, this should be done. Is that clear? <laughs> 